So today I wanted to show you guys how I made my DIY YouTube setup, I guess. Like I literally just used whatever I had at my disposal. In this case, it's all the things that I've used over time and accumulated over time through the different filmmaking endeavors that I've put myself into. This includes client stuff that I've done and, and things that I've invested in myself to grow as a filmmaker, grow as a DP, so on and so forth. So this is stuff that I just picked up along the way and I've kind of just used what I have. I haven't put any extra money into this. I didn't like buy extra stuff, but I think the whole point of this is to use whatever you have at your disposal right now. So whether it's a camera, mirrorless camera, whatever, or your smartphone, it doesn't matter. Just to get the ball rolling, like just use whatever you have. And over time, and you're still enjoying what you're doing, you can buy things that help you, basically. They're just tools. That's all All this stuff is, it's just serving as a tool. There's no reason to buy a bunch of stuff if I have it at my disposal right now. So the first thing that I made was this DIY softbox. For the light source, I use these cheap LED newer panels that I've picked up along the way. Fairly inexpensive, and they come with stands, which is cool. But the lights themselves are pretty harsh if you just use them by themselves, so, what I've learned over time is to get some type of diffusion in front of it. And you can use literally anything that has that diffusion type of material or fabric to it. So there's definitely more higher end things that you can use to diffuse, but I'm using a five in one panel. I used a bungee cord with two hooks on either end. There's a little loop on the end of the diffuser and I literally just put it into one of the hooks. And then on the other side of the hook, I just put painter's tape to the ceiling and put the hook on top of it. That there's literally, you can't get more DIY than this. Yeah, it's, it's a floating diffusion. It's, it's pretty great. This kind of mimics those bigger soft boxes that you see on some uh, film sets that are just giant sources of soft light. That's what this is mimicking. So the reflector itself is pretty big. And when you put a light behind that and it shines through, it just kind of softens up that light, chops it up a little bit. Doesn't make it look so harsh with the shadows on my face or the shadows anywhere else. And the farther away the light and the diffusion are from each other, the more softer the light will appear. On top of that, I also put the diffusion plates on both of these lights. And this adds an additional layer of diffusion into the lights as well. So here's the difference between the regular LED without any diffusion or the little diffusion panels inside, just straight up LED. And here it is with the diffusion panel that comes with the light. And then here it is with the diffusion panel as well as the giant diffusion disc. Pretty cool. Then perpendicular from this light, I have another light that is exactly the same as the other one, same settings. Uh, maybe I dimmed it a little bit more, but it's aimed at the ceiling with the barn doors kind of like open towards the ceiling only, so it's not shining on my face. This is my primary shine on my face light. This is serving as like a bounce, so it shoots up on the ceiling, which is white, and it bounces back down on me and around me. Adds that more ambient kind of lighting that's not so harsh as well. Another way to get more soft light, but it's not exactly needed. I could just use the key, I could just, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but this is just how I chose to do it, essentially. The next thing is the no boom operator needed stand. So basically what this stand consists of is a mic stand that you could pick up for pretty cheap. It doesn't go too high, I wish it went higher, but this is fine. So once I go to that height, the maximum height that is available, I turn the stand a little bit more down, arcing over my shot. It is The mic is just out of frame. My finger is right where the mic is, but it's just out of frame. And from there, I fastened a H1N zoom recorder. I fastened that to the pole by using a Velcro strip that came with my Angelbird CFast card, which came in handy. I just kind of tightened that as tight as I can around the H1N recorder. I can still move it around, which is good, but uh, it's not gonna, not gonna fall off, which is great. And then plugged into that is the mic itself. I, I'm just using an old Rode VideoMic Pro that hasn't really seen the light of day in a little while. So, and there's newer models that have come out since then, but it's a decent mic, it does the job. And that has a TRS, cable at the end of it. What you would normally do is plug that into your camera, but in this case, I'm plugging it into the H1N. I literally just plug it in and bada bing, sound. Before I press record, I test the levels, make sure I can hear myself 
I see the levels bouncing and I'm all good. As for the mic and where it's positioned, typically you want your mic six to 12 inches away from your voice or wherever the sound source is coming from. And when you're using shotgun mics at least, and that varies, but that's, that's generally a good area. So in this case, the mic is pointing down towards me, but it's more pointing down towards my chest and not my mouth. And yeah, that's this is what you're hearing right now. So yeah. Now this setup isn't really like DIY, I guess. It's I, in a way it is, but this is literally just what I had laying around. So I figured out a way to use it. The setup alone is about 200 bucks for both of them. I'm sure you can get it cheaper somewhere else, but there's definitely cheaper ways of doing this. You could use another audio recorder, put it in front of you. You can use your camera. I wouldn't use your camera actually, Never mind. Camera audio is pretty bad. You can use your phone. Just literally put your phone right in front of you. Or using a lav. I was using a lav in my last video. I was hearing a lot of crackling and movement from it, so I decided not to use that for this one, but also another option. It's also good to have backup audio for this type of stuff because I see little LED indicators on my camera and on my mic to make sure that they're still recording, but you never know what could happen. It could turn off or something may happen and then you're out of audio. You gotta be stuck with whatever you have. Worst case, you may have to reshoot. So backup recording is always good. And as for the mic leveling, you just wanna aim between negative six dB and negative 12 dB. That's where that's the ballpark you wanna hit in terms of the audio that you are projecting. So set up everything and then just put the mic where you think you wanna put it and make sure you're hitting those levels. The last DIY thing that I've made and put together is a video light that I don't typically use all that often, but it's always good to have on me. That's why I purchased it. It's pretty cheap. It's a Viltrox light, I believe. Put it on a light stand. It has a threading on the bottom so you can put it on a light stand if you wanted to. It's also a bicolor light, which is cool. Put it at the lowest setting. It goes down to only 20%, which is kind of a bummer because it's still kind of bright in my opinion, but it's fine, it does the job. And I put some tin foil on and around it. It's basically serving as the barn doors from the newer lights. It's kind of just being more directional with the light and shaping the light a little bit more. So right now it's on with the tin foil around it and it's kind of shining more as a hair light, which is kind of separating me from the background, which is always good. Uh, adds a little bit more dimension to your shot, which is great. And here it is without the tinfoil on it. So it's a little bit more spread out. It's kind of getting into the other parts of the wall. It's not as directional. So that's the, basically the point of the tinfoil. You don't need to put tinfoil on it. Maybe I won't use it, but it's fine. So effectively what this is doing is making a motivated light out of this light bulb right here. So the light bulb's orange. It's basically, it's enhancing that a little bit more. So it's putting a little bit more of that light on me, which makes it look like it's coming from that, but it's actually coming from that. That's the whole point. Motivated light and the light motivates me. That's about it though. If you have any questions about what equipment I'm using or even any suggestions as to what I should be using, uh, anything is appreciated. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you would prefer to use and why uh, or what you, if you liked my setup, it's pretty, it works for me, you know, it does the job. Uh, this reflector is just cool to look at. It's just dangling from the ceiling. If you got this far into the video, thank you for watching. And if you wanna help me make more videos like this and other cool videos, if you have any suggestions as well, uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And uh, have a good day.